Okay, let's work on problem 3.11. And in this problem, uh, you've got some specimen, you've got a cross-sectional area, and you've got a length. So, L0. Uh, you got an Instron testing machine, and you're pulling on this specimen, and you got a strain rate of uh, 10, 1 times 10 to the minus 3, 1 times 10 to the minus 3 inverse seconds. It says the Instron machine has a stiffness. is equal to uh, 20 mega Newton per meter. And from this, uh, we're also given that the specimen has a, or the, uh, sorry, that not the specimen, but that the uh, measured Elast, uh, measured uh, Young's modulus E is equal to uh, 210 giganewton per meter is equal to, uh, sorry, meter squared is giga pascal. Okay, so this, this problem I, I found actually fairly uh, confusing. And what I found confusing about it is that I have no idea why they gave us a strain rate. And, and maybe there's some element to this that I'm not seeing, but as far as I can tell, uh, the real trick here is to relate the measured Young's modulus to the stiffness of the and the uh, subsequent uh, machine stiffness and the part stiffness, right? The uh, the problem says uh, determine determine uh, the slope of the load extension curve. in in the elastic regime okay so this is the problem statement so basically uh if we have uh some load versus length and it starts at L0, then there's going to be some shape change. And in the elastic regime, it's linear. OK. Well, what do we have? Well, we know that we measured the Young's modulus. And we know that we've got the uh, stress and the strain from this Instron machine. So we know that the stress is equal to E epsilon. OK. Ah, I'm sorry. Is anything kind of drawback from this uh, draw board software is it is, has a tendency to blow up when I touch it. Uh, so if you have the stress strain relation, then we know the Young's modulus is the stress over the strain. And we know that that is the force 
per initial area divided by the change in length by the initial length. So it's worth pointing out here that if I wanted to, I could uh, call this uh, delta L, where delta L ranges from zero to the degree of extension. So that's uh, just another way of representing that. Uh, okay, we got that. So that means that here I get force per change in length, L0 over LA. So that's known. And this, oh, darn it. this is in units of Newton per meter. So that has the same units as stiffness. And that was kind of the, the key to, to making this all work, right? Because once you have that, uh, then we can rearrange this to give us that P over delta L is equal to uh, E A naught over L naught. And let's call this uh, the total force per extension, right? This is what we're measuring but we know that part of this stiffness is due to the machine and part of the stiffness is due to the part. So we know that P over delta L tote is equal to P over delta L, call it machine, plus P over delta L sample. which means that we have, uh, ah, darn it. Which means that we have uh, P over delta L sample is equal to P over delta L tote minus P over delta L machine is equal to E A naught over L naught minus uh, 20 times 10 to the uh, six, and that's in Newton per meter. The big thing here is to, to watch out for the units. And that's something that I've noticed in many people's homework uh, is you're given something in gigapascal and, and people will just, or not homework or say exams, and people just dump that in. Uh, if you're very careful, you can do that. Uh, I'm not careful. And in fact, my entire life has been, you know, working as a theoretician. So all I do are math problems. And what I have found is that the easiest way to not mess up a math problem is to convert to base units. So for me, I would convert my machine stiffness into Newton per meter. And I would make my A0, which, uh, what is this? I guess in this case, they called it two square centimeters, I would call that uh, two times 10 to the negative four, I think it's negative four meters squared divided by length. And they give that as 10 centimeters. So that I would call that 0 0.10 meter. And then my, uh, Young's modulus, I would call that uh, 210 times 10 to the uh, 
giga is going to be nine. And that will give me Pascal's is equal to my P over delta L. And this is then Newton per meter. So convert everything to the base units. Again, you don't have to, but that is uh, the easiest way to not mess things up. So this is how you solve problem 3.11.